Hi guys. My name is Godwin Abogany. Today's tutorials is about research techniques in planning. And we are going to be focusing on the concept of research today. First of all, if I ask you, what is not research? I know you will be short of words. But I must tell you in this tutorials, research is not just gathering of information. Researching fact, or combining paragraph from different sources. And please if you haven't already I'd like you to click to the subscribe button and the notification icon for more informations in planning. You see it is a scientific control empirical, rigorous and a precise method used to find solutions to problems, or to discover and interpret new information that is generally accepted. There is no one definition for research. It is also a structure inquiry that utilizes scientific methodology to find solutions to problems and to develop new knowledge that is generally accepted. It may mean so many things to many people. But in social science, which I am in urban and regional planning, research is focused in finding solutions to societal problems. Now you see what research also does, other than just researching fact, or gathering of information, and even, not just combining paragraph from different sources. So why research? In this tutorials it is classified in two one student level, and, two society level. So at the student level, it helps students in relating the classwork and develop new concepts in a practical level. And it also provide opportunity to carry out an independent self-study in other to be familiar with the method of acquiring knowledge, including the rural village design of the class group work. This include the activities of researching for published and unpublished documents. So this reasons are enough to know why students need research. Next is the society level, as it was earlier that it focuses on finding solutions to societal problems. It also develop new tools concept, theories and principle. And in addition it initiate formulate and analyze interrelationships between variables and to drive casual information. And it also aid planning and national development, and to formulate strategies and polices. You see as both in the student level and the society level how research serves as a guide in order to incorporate problems too. Okay, we move to the importance of research in planning. This varies from each other, and we can here by start to say, one demographic characteristics, two physical characteristics, three economic characteristics, four leisure and recreation, socioeconomic characteristics, facility utilities and services, six housing condition, potentials and constraint to development. In other to undertake our village town regional sector redevelopment plans. This are the importance of research in planning. Classification of research. Research is classified into two main groups. The purpose-based research and the method-based research. Under the purpose-based research we have the fundamental research. Fundamental research. Also known as the basic research. Or pure research. It does not usually generate findings that have immediate application in a practical level. Fundamental research mainly aim to answer the question of why, what, or how, and they tend to contribute the pool of fundamental knowledge in the research area. An example of fundamental research is 1. An investigation looking at what weather stress level influence how often students engage in academic cheating. 2. A study looking at how caffeine consumption impact the brian. 3. A study assessing whether men or women are more likely to suffer from depression. Now we move to the next which is the applied research. Applied research is a type of research design that seeks to solve a specific problem or provide innovative solutions to issues affecting an individual, group or society. For example applied researchers may investigate ways and means to improve agricultural crop production, treat or cure a specific disease improve the energy efficiency of homes offices or modes of transportation. It also suggests innovative and modified method of measurement in any specific investigation. Now the action research. Action research is a disciplined process of inquiry conducted by and for those taking the action. The primary reason for engaging in action research is to assist the actor in improving or refining his or her actions. Educational action research can be engaged in by a single teacher by a group of colleagues who shares an interest in a common problem or by the entire faculty of a school. Example of an action research. 1. Observing individual or group. 2. Using audio and videotape recorder. 3. Using structured or semi-structured interviews. 4. Taking field notes. 
5. Using analytic memoing. 6. Using or taking photographs. And also distributing surveys or questionnaires. Now for research and development research. Is a process of knowledge creation production diffusion and application. It involves innovation in scientific technology management measures and social and political system. For example, a computer software company would spend much more on research and development than a retail sales company would. Now for the method-based research. This are the descriptive research. The descriptive research is a type of research that describes a population situation or phenomenon that has been studied. It focuses on answering the how, what, when and where questions if a research problem rather than the why. This is mainly because it is important to have a proper understanding of what a research problem is about before investigating why it exists in the first place. For example, an investor considering an investment in the ever-changing Amsterdam housing market needs to understand what the current state of market is, how it changes and when it changes before asking for the why. This is where descriptive research come in. Types of descriptive research. 1. Descriptive survey. It uses survey to gather data about varying subject. 2. Descriptive normative survey. This is an extension of the descriptive survey with the addition being normative element. 3. Descriptive status. This is a quantitative description technique that seeks to answer question about real-life situations. 4. Descriptive analysis. This method of research describe a subject by further analyzing it, which in this case involves dividing it into two. This method is employed in biological science for the classification of plants and animals. Example of descriptive research is comparing student performance and also human behavior can also be described. Experimental research is a study that strictly adheres to a scientific research design. It includes a hypothesis, a variable that can be manipulated by the researcher and variables that can be measured calculated and compared. Most importantly experimental research is completed in a controlled environment. Types of experimental research. We have the pre-experimental research design. And also the quasi-experimental research design. Lastly the true experimental research design. Example of experimental research is. Administering exams after the end of semester. 2. Employee skill evaluation. And lastly. Evaluation of teaching method. That is for experimental research. Next is the survey research. Survey research is defined as the process of conducting research using survey that researchers send to survey respondents. The data collected from draw meaningful research conclusions. There are three main survey research methods divided based on the medium of conducting survey research. 1. Online or email is one of the most popular survey research methods today. 2. Phone. Survey research conducted over telephone can be useful in collecting data from a more expensive section of the target population. 3. Face-to-face. -face. Researchers conduct face-to-face in-depth interviews in situations where there is a complicated problem to solve. Quantitative research. This method allows you to test a hypothesis by systematically collecting and analyzing data. And the qualitative research. Method that allow you to explore idea and experiences depth. It also concerned with understanding human behavior from informant perspective. And also the correlation research. Correlation research is a type of non-experimental research method. In which a researcher measures two variables understand and assesses that the statistical relationship between them with no influence from any extraneous variable. For example. You want to know if people who have higher income are more likely to be vegetarian. You don't think that income causes vegetarianism. But finding a relationship could lead to a better understanding of the factor that influence or limit people's dietary choice. And lastly we have the case study research. A case study is a research approach that is as to generate an in-depth multifaceted understanding of a complex issue in its real-life context. It is an established research design that is used extensively in a wide variety of discipline particular in the social sciences. I think I still have three minutes left. So let's move to literature review. If you hear the word literature what do you think? I want you to bear this in mind. That literature is life. And all the activities that has been going on around you can said to be literature. Okay now. Literature review. Literature review refers to the collective body of an existing knowledge in a subject field. Literature review refers to the activity of examining. 
reading, and collecting this existing knowledge other that they can form a theological framework for the research. It must be important to note that the literature to be reviewed must be relevant to the research. So careful sampling is a buyer. Benefits of literature review. 1. It shows the state of the art in the subject area of the research. 2. To discover important theories, concept variables, principles, standard and so on. 3. Provide new ideas and approach to dealing with the peculiar problem of the study. 4. Establish the context and significance of a problem. 5. Aid the evaluation of the current work against previous related works. We are going to discuss more about literature in the next video. So I will like you to click to the subscribe button and the notification icon to get notified whenever I post a video here on this channel. See you next time. Bye.